Hey, how you going? Thanks for clicking on it and watching it with me. I'm just going to share a video about um, some of these comments about the Simpsons and automatic trucking and something's up, yeah, something's off with everything that's going on. So with automated trucks planning to put drivers out of work, it would be beneficial for the ruling class to have drivers that are prone to protest to be removed from the equation. AKA wiped out. If you convince a truck driver that the is bad and get them to refuse it, when the new deadly hits, they will more likely be to die out, reducing the labour pool. And I see this number a lot in a lot of posts. Okay, this is where people are saying The Simpsons predicted. I think that the people that write The Simpsons are actually high up Masons and it's predicted programming. They know about it, so they're putting it in. And of course, you see the the six 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 there as well. It's a miracle. <laughs> if technology has taught us anything, it's that innovation never stops trucking along. We're riding in a self-driving truck, head down the highway. There is a safety driver, but that. These have been on the highway since, I think, 2016, but the technology started around 2011. Um, but yeah, the technology's been around for a while. It's only a backup. Insert cheesy line here. Look! Look, Mum, no hands! <laughs> You're riding shotgun with Starsky Robotics for this real-world test in real-time traffic. Other drivers have no clue they're sharing the road with a robotic tractor trailer. It's hey look, nobody's driving. It's a glimpse into what may be the future of long haul trucking. Why is this a better option than just having him drive right now? So They don't have to pay as much money. It's not to do with the caring about drivers, it's got to do with costs and, and them making more money. So there's a there's there's been a systemic problem in the U.S., which is that it's it's, it's really really hard to to hire and retain long haul truck drivers. We get forty bucks an hour to drive these rigs. You think anybody'd hire us if they knew we weren't really driving the trucks? We aim to make truck driving a job where you can go into the office, work a work an eight hour shift, and then go home. In me. In fact, there is someone. Now this is like your flight simulator stuff that you see. They're sitting in an office and, you know, the truck will be running by the AI and they'll be sitting thousands of kilometers away. In an office overseeing our trip. Copy, copy. He's more than 100 miles away in Jacksonville, connected remotely. But for most of our ride... What happens when the internet goes down? What happens when the GPS or there's an EMP and all these vehicles are on the road and suddenly there's nothing controlling them? Down I-95 near Orlando, the real driver is AI. And with this stuff, think opposite. So whatever they say, you think the opposite of what they're doing. The Freedom Convoy is nothing but a full dot crowdfunded convoy assistantly fighting against the for the truckers to be has raised over six million dollars to gun for fund me organizers previously known for Canada's far right ecosystem have publicly made and its loudest promoter Pat King is a racist who tried to incite his audience to violence more times than you can count he's so bad for their public images that the other organizers have even tried to put some distance between them some sort convoy supporters like the Diagon Network are even saying that they want this to be Canada's very own, referring to the attempted of that led to multiple deaths, widespread arrests. It's an acceleration movement, which means they believe the revolution is inevitable and necessary to collapse the current system. It's also rife with. Since the start of the conspiracy, far right elements together. People's Party of Canada, the Young Supremacists, Canada's First, and Diagnum Network is one example, the Convoy is another. Mainstream media has been very slow to report the far connections, just as they were in 2019 when they 
much smaller we roll convoy, most of them giving unacritical coverage using their language and calling it a freedom convoy. Now arriving from different corners of Canada, the fleet of semi-trucks, half-ton pickups, SUVs and a few more sedans on its way to Parliament Hill. Many other supporters swear that it isn't about even blazingly. They aren't even most of them probably believe it too, but the organisers behind the convoy and when it emerged from paint a very different picture. United Reroll 2.0, the convoy, dr convoy draws adapt compa comparisons to similar, a bit less funded protest movement held in 2019. The convoy, organised primarily by associates of the created a narrative of disenfranchised oil and gas workers riding their rigs across the country to force a detached and distant Ottawa to listen largely funded by individuals already associated with the, which at the time was probably united by the, and excited by the protests held by the France movement. They copied the signature uniform, name and adopted new grievances that would get them much larger audiences. They said that they were for oil and gas and that they were represented by Western alienation from distant liberal Ottawa. But the Facebook groups were also full of hundreds of examples of exploit calling for that and the theme remains present along. By the time it rolled into Ottawa, media had started to catch on. Then Godley spoke on a second stage. The hate group, Northern Guard, was spotted in the audience. Krista Hayes, who were previously convicted of uttering threats of violence against who and has a history of membership of was there so there. Ultimately URW was a bust with far fewer vehicles showing up than promised and only a hundred participants demoralised. The Yellow Vest Canada movement started to die off and some holdouts keep similar demonstrations going for months. The lead up to 22 Freedom Convoy is extremely similar to the lead up of the URW and shares many of the same organisers participants. They have been using the from promoted materials except this time they have the weight of the movement behind them and six million dollars. Let's dive into it. The money collectors Tamara Leach and BJ Dita Neither of them who are truck drivers are currently listed as the organisers of the GoFundMe page. Ditcher was a late addition, only added this week. Both having interesting histories when it comes to political organising. Leach was born in Saskatchewan, now hails from Medical Medicine Hat, Alberta, where she served as the organiser for the Yellow Vest Movement, a regional coordinator that's for the separatist Western Exit or we Exit Movement in Alberta is now the secretary for the Maverick Party, another separatist movement of the Fringe Political Party. Attending and boasting Yellow Vest events starting in 2018, she's social media posts from the Times show her in one moment calling for some hateful rhetoric within the movement while also posting articles of her own operating in Canada. She says the Post, an organisation that advocates anti-Muslim content through the web, as well as deeply conspiratorial and once again posted by seriously dubious security expert Tom Cregan. Leach heavily promoted Quigg's 2019 Alberta tour of saying it was an absolute honour to have hosted him during his stay in Medicine Hat. So these are the two people that are running it. Neither of them are truck, truck drivers. Neither of them know what the truck drivers are going through personally. The Progressive Party, Conservative Party of Ontario is now just like the Liberal Party or the NDP, they are suffering from political entryism. Quigg said in an episode criticising member of the provincial parliament, Khalid Rashid, a Muslim man, that they have members in the party who are there to advance the cause of a foreign ideology. So either Progressive Conservative Party takes a very hard look at itself now or faces a future where extreme and becomes a normalisation within the party. She shared the episode with a comment, Canadians, are you prepared? Paying attention yet, we do not want your... We do not want the... In Canada... Scrutiny of the convoy has increased, which according to the Canadian press briefly resulted in the crowdsourcing website freezing donations shortly thereafter. One time Conservative Party of Canada candidate, People's Party of Canada, booster and co-founder of the podcast network, probably correct, Benjamin B.J. Ditcher, appeared as a co-organiser on the GoFundMe project. Ditcher's webshop shares the Quiggan report, as Ditcher himself shares in sentiments. Publicly claimed that the is rotting away our society like syphilis. The Party of Canada is suffering from the stench of cultural revitalism and she said during the first conference held in Quebec, it's suffering from the stench of extremism the same way the third world countries suffer from extremist groups, separatist groups and all that. Pat King is so toxic he's sort of disavowed. Patrick King, another former Yellow Vesta, one time 
a major figure of the movement was, well, United We Roll. This is listed as a contact to join a belt and earth portion of the convoy of conspiracy. Streamer. King made several headlines when he and his supporter confronted men as members of the anti-racist rally in Red Deer, Alberta. Several instances of violence occurred during this event, including against an individual who attempted to serve King with a restraining order. Black Lives Matter and uh, planning a huge rally to disrupt our community, he said at the time. Help support us, help drive out these and disrupt communities and threatening people. He also drew attention to after a wild misinterpretation of court documents leading him to claiming he forced Alberta to abandon its public health lockdowns. In the past, King has gone on the record about his feelings about the Anglo-Saxon replacement. It feels the flood of Canada with refugees, the subvert and education system, thin rebranding of the Great Replacement Theory, touted by uh, the points King expressly overlooked the racist and anti-Semitic statements stream about the upcoming federal election, King complained that he had to leave the movement due to the lack of success. The election won't matter unless you change. Yep. Follow thing. Can't say that. I'll get struck down here. Um, so I'll leave these links in the description. So the people that started the convoy nothing to do with trucks and have a political history of this sort of stuff. That's why a lot of people think it's a false flag operation. Driving cars, are they real? Yes, of course they are. Um, 20 September, September 2017, the DO published, T published new safety guidelines. So far they got four of the levels. Um, they use GPS, cameras, radar to determine speed, direction, reposition, electronic and servo controls the steering, throttle and braking to maintain course and speed. So what's going on in Australia? For months and months upon months, I have heard stories about truck protests and it never eventuates. It's just the elite trying to stir it on. And you look at all of this here, there's not, there's no trucks in that. And the truck drivers that I've spoken to today know nothing about it. Canberra has been costed with a wall of noise of multiple convoys of trucks, cars, caravans and other roadworthy vehicles met in the national capital on Monday to protest for freedom against. It appears to have been organised through Telegram and public Facebook group. The 22 official convoy to Canberra it seems to be inspired by hordes of and an Canadian truckers that swarmed Otter to protest similar restrictions on Sunday, with the same protesters reportedly carrying flags and signs embezzled. With the Australian version has seen people drive from nearly every capital city on the mainland to meet in Canberra. No matter if you can't see the Cocker convoy adorned with its upside down flags and cursed energy, because and hardly any trucks in this convoy. They're all cars. No trucks there. Everyone I know is bu too busy working, delivering freight. Unsurprisingly, this cooker convoy has been golded by human cane toad. Craig Kelly and protesters have woken up at the butt crack of dawn to drive hours to descend on Parliament House on Monday morning. Some travelling over the weekend. By the looks of things, a good 30 odd people arrived by 11 a.m. an hour after the designated meet-up time. No truckers there. No men in um, work uniforms or, you know, high vis or anything like that. There's no reported number of how many vehicles of people are anticipated to try enter the area around Parliament House. Peace have retreated after they were initially stopping and checking all cars trying to arrive, drive towards the site. Um, police retreated and protests are freely parking on the lawn. It seems that there aren't many trucks in this trucker leg cavalade either. And there have been at least one craft crash involving multiple cars and one of the various convoys descending on the capital. From what we could see on social media outside of Telegram, there's no real plan for Australian convoy protests beyond the drive to Canberra with a flag in Hong Kong, or if the group is planning to occupy a space near Parliament House similar to the protests in Canberra, Canada. And the map of Instagram shows a highlighted space at the foot of the stairs of Parliament House where people are meeting to protest, but beyond that, the group's plans seem a bit directionless. Some protests have mounted the curbs and driven up the lawns directly into Parliament House. Now, the federal police have basically let this happen for the media, so the public gain attention. There's a copper standing there. They've let this happen.
So now there's going to be new laws pushed through or barricades put up. Once fundraisers have bank banked considerable amounts of money for people wanting to get financially support the convoy. You know, people aren't getting... They've spent the last dollars on this, but they're not getting no reimbursements. The Oz Campbell Convoy official fundraiser doesn't specify where donations will be going, with people giving $1,000 to the fundraiser with no direction behind it. Promise to money given to people in need seems legit. And as for these fundraisers, don't ever give them to. Like, with the one with the fire, the Australian fires in 2019, those people still haven't got money and over $100 million was raised. Not one cent has gone to the people who need it. If you're going to give money to someone, try and find them personally, either on Facebook or, or look up their name. Try and find them personally. Contact them personally and give it to them personally because they're not going to get the money from GoFundMe because they like to take a percentage of it anyway. You're not helping them by giving it to these causes. GoFundMe freezes 160000 until organisers of Combo to Canberra protest detail spending plan. GoFundMe froze the funds since raised by supporters. Convoy of trucks and cars converging on Canberra to protest. After the vehicles began arriving in the national capital this morning, Australian Federal Police were forced to defend the front doors of Parliament House as hundreds of people who were part of a larger protest movement moved towards the public entrance. The convoy rally to Canberra has been led by groups who are against the... includes so-called... Many trucks, cars, travelling thousands of kilometres. Many demonstrators were seen waving the Australian red side flags upside down. Generally a distress single singing, yell freedom, sack them all. Also belted renditions of Amazing Grace and John Farden's Yell the Voice. Last post was played. Parliament is not sitting until next week, but the demonstrators demanded a representative come out and address the people who travelled to be in Canberra and took to social media to declare the protest would take place in over several days. Protests mirror similar protests overseas, including a convoy of thousands of Canadian truckers other protests have converged on Ottawa over the weekend to protest about the government's but crowdfunding efforts by demonstrators has run into trouble with them freezing it. Anonymous organiser who calls themselves Ironbark Thunderbolt is unable to access the funds until they're able to detail how the money will be spent according to GoFundMe. The funds will be held safely. Um, on the convoy's GoFundMe description, the person who calls themselves Ironbark Thunderbolt says the money will be given to Western Australian doomsday prepper James Greer, who has declared his intention to drive the camper van to Cam Canberra to protest the money will be withdrawn into James's account and the team will gather receipts and information from those in need to reimburse or transfer. The convoy's GoFundMe description reads, Transfers that were made directly to the people in need are lawful team are happy to help them deal with any discrepancies. Ironbark Thunderbolt, Mr Greer and other organisers of the convoy have not responded to request for comment they're still frozen goes on about Canada's amount uh, on the Australian Convoy Facebook page members have voiced confusion and frustration with the process claiming the expenses they have been told would be covered by the GoFundMe moment some drivers have travelled thousands of kilometres and to attend and expect to be reimbursed on fuel costs. On Sunday, true drivers on their way to the rally crashed their utes in a pile-up near Hawkesby River. So no one's going to get the money because those people will keep it or Parliament will freeze it. Um, the, the GoFundMe will freeze it. Police have urged motorists in Canberra to avoid the roads around Parliament House and have blocked off access to entry point. Last month, the front entrance of Old Parliament House was set on fire as protests took place out front. It wasn't protests, it was Aboriginal smoking um, ceremony and the building was set on fire. This is the man that is doing it, like supposed to get the money. He is a doomsday prepper, lives in his caravan, um, seems to get a lot of attention in the media and is promoted a lot. I'm not going to give him attention, I'll put it in the links. And how do we go from... You know, about a month ago here in Australia, all over the media, we were hearing about ad blue shortages, which is what they put in the fuel to reduce the emissions, um, saying that they're going to run out within a month um, by January, that we're going to run out, uh, say that it comes from China, etc. Uh, they've got a company in Bris here in Brisbane to make it, but it's only a short temporary contract because they're supposed to close down in December 22. Um, so they opened the world's largest ad blue plant in 2018. So that happened and now no other country is allowed to make it. Um, 15 million litres of ad blue on hand. Most of our fuel tankers go, go to our service stations across the country relying on ad blue to be able to run. It's a big issue. Um, so there's no way that 
all of these truck drivers are going to be attending protests when AdBlue, they can only get 50 litres a time. Every time they go into a service station, they are only allowed to buy 50 litres of AdBlue at, at something like $2.80, $2.90 a, a litre. So there's no way that they'll be doing it. I've spoken to several people and they're not. Also, I shared several videos during last year about how many times it was in the media about so-called truck protests and it never happened. This is one I shared in September 17th and uh, nothing happened out of that one either. Uh, it just sort of fizzled out and nothing happened at all. It was over a pay dispute. So uh, yeah, it never really gained any traction. It was sort of the Transport Workers Union trying to stir up shit. Alcohol. Now this is a, a real uh, blockage of what, what happened in 1979 on Razor Hume Highway. Um, this bloke went around saying that there's going to be a truck blockade. This is why I say it's a psyop because it just come out of nowhere and even the truck drivers didn't know about it. They've been told that they have to get get the Jabiru, and if they don't get the Jabiru, um, they're stopped, you know. So um, this is a major concern. I am concerned about it because it's happened before. 79, the defence is still on Razorback. Way through a nine-day blockade by truck drivers around Australia demanding the abolition of road taxes. Our reporter met with the revolutionary. So when this went on, they blocked the highways for over a week or a couple of weeks or so. Um, tens of thousands of trucks involved in all the states, every state here in Australia, blocking every major highway. So this one in Canberra, that's not a blockade, it's not a truck protest, that was just a few cars. This is the Hume Highway blocked down at um, back of Berry, up in there, they totally blocked the highway. That's what a, that's what a truck blockade, truck protest looks like. See, here it is here. Blocking the highway. These are all the states where where everything was on the major highways. That's a real truck protest. So around the same time that um, Star Trek was wanting to strike Toll Logistics, which is one of the biggest trucking companies here in Australia, decided to strike as well, saying over 7,000 walked off the job. Um, that they weren't going to work for 24 hours and that everything would be, uh, you know, like wouldn't be deliveries in supermarkets, hospitals wouldn't get stuff, uh, disrupt food, petrol, parcel supplies, um, promised it would not influence the supply of the jabs and essential medical goods. Uh, but yet, once again, it never acquainted to anything really, but... What I want to share here, and this is what I spoke to my friend about again today, and they don't want anything to do with it for this simple reason. Here in Australia, our laws have changed. You cannot do this shit. If you want to do this shit, you're going to end up locked up. Yeah. All the laws that have been brought in, especially since 2007, they ramped it up. Uh, motivated violence is, is basically, you block a port, um, you block a border, that is considered politically motivated violence. Acts of violence for achieving a political objective in Australia. Training, planning, preparations, other activities for purpose such as violence, subversion. Yeah. Uh, and it, it goes into other corp district corporations, you know, other states, all that kind of stuff. They've also changed the, the last few days they have changed the terrorism laws and I'll quickly show you what they've done in that and this one is really concerning because if you read it in another way it, it I think they're talking about uh, social media sites what triggers the powers, all three warrants, and limited by suspicion of rebel and offence has been committed, defined as a serious commonwealth offence or a serious state offence, being that it has a federal aspect. Serious offences are those carrying a ma maximum sentence of three or more years in prison. They claim there's strict limits on the census, but up here, 
identify and disrupt bill. This bill creates three types of warrants, enabling the Australian Federal Police and Criminal Intelligence Commission to identify, disrupt suspected criminal activity. Now, they've got all of this happening all over the world. Netherlands introduced it. Um, Sweden introduced it. All of the countries, part of the United Nations, are introducing these laws. So, talking about bills pushed through Parliament. But basically, um, it started with a bloke carrying on about everything, and it never gained any movement, any any motion. Uh, I don't think it would here in Australia. Um, I really don't think it would. What government is doing? Government, the public servants will still get paid regardless, but the rest of the trades and the industries, nurses, doctors, big these trucks are here and you know like okay this here is the gundawindi border to new queensland to new south wales and this is just a, a normal day and you can see how many are here on a normal day i counted i think it was 50 or no it might have been 40 something 40 up the almost 50 pretty sure unless that was another video i was watching from the day before another day but there was a lot of trucks there. That's what a truck blockage would look like. That's a lot. I'll leave uh, Terry. That's what it would look like. Not this shit that we're seeing on social media. The other thing I noticed in the Simpsons episode, they've got the grassy knoll. Do you guys remember what else happened on the grassy knoll? You want a refresher? what happened on the grassy knoll, a false flag that killed a president, you see. There's a lot of subliminal messages in that. The murky matter of protests and the donations that drive them, much has been on laid on social media and the mainstream media about the trucker protests that are in the works. Truckers are rightfully upset about the, that was completely applied to cross-border essential workers, including the professional drivers who've been keeping us supplied throughout the, but such protests rally rarely just delivers results aside from angering the motoring public and casting shade on our industry. We will report on significant events that disrupt our industry and your business, but it's nothing to, to support from this in this form process. One disturbing trend is the amount of money being thrown on recent attempts to bring commerce to a halt. One initiative raised more than 900,000 by GoFundMe in less than a week. This is fairly significant and it's up to 6 million at the moment. And startling when you're considering where that money is going. The fundraising initiative was started by Tamara Leach who has a history of association with radical groups including the recently formed Separatist Maverick Party in Alberta. Yes, by this weekend there is likely to be about 6 million. Um, but 1 million in the hands of someone affiliated with a party that wants to break up Canada. Plan B, mind you. In her last post, past, in her past, Lynch was re regional coordinator of the West Ex in southern eastern Alberta and was a member of the board for West Ex Alberta. What is West Ex Alberta? It was the provincial party whose co-founder wanted to exit Canada and join Trump US led. Like later took her ambitions federally and joined the federal West Ex Canada board, which would later become the Maverick Party. She was also affiliated with the Yellow Vest Movement, which was linked to death threats against the PM. Is this what we've become, Canada? To her credit, she attempted to distance her local chapter from those making the death threats, but think for a second, she was affiliated with an organisation that threatened to kill the PM and now has a million of your money to distribute as she see fit. Curiously, she seem, seemingly has no direct contact to the trucking industry. She worked in the oil and gas industry and was a singer for a local metal band. So where does the love for the truckers come from? And where will the million or so bucks go? Will it go to the organisers' bank account? that we know. That's how GoFundMe works. From there, who knows, since the fundraiser is not an official charity or organisation, there's no further accountability. Incidentally, it chooses not to promote initiatives for this very reason. She says the money will go towards reimbursing participating truckers for their fuel costs. This is great, but hauling a load will pay more than bob tiling across the country for the cost of diesel. Rates aren't bad these days. She'll cover the food and lodging too if you really need it. Good news is the funds will be dispersed by e transfer preferred paper trail since GoFundMe wipes its hands of the accountability once the dough is deposited into her account. We hope she'll be forthcoming about how the funds are distributed. As previously mentioned, we don't think the protests that disrupt the cross border or any other traffic are safe or productive. We don't support these initiatives. We do, however, agree that the government bludgeoning of yeah.
If these protests do materialise, it mainly fuzzle out with actually no time to roll. We have concerns about the effect that they'll have on how the public perceives the industry and how the safety risks posed to the mothering public and how a substantial chunk of the money collected from hard work and truckies will be spent. Also, I've seen videos of um, people throwing nails onto the highways. Leftists scatter nails all over the highway to stop the convoy. Elon Musk is supporting it. Boy trucker finds nails on the roads. It's very dangerous because sometimes the trucks don't get flat tires straight away. It might take some time and then it'll blow out a couple of weeks later when they'll be driving down the highway. Very dangerous. Truckers covering to Ottawa from St. Jerome, Quebec, made a potentially dangerous discovery on the highway. According to a circulating video posted on social media, they discovered piles of nails seemingly placed intentionally to stop or harm the convoy. Putting nails on the ground so we can't get through, says the trucker. Guys, this is a... Doubt those nails were actually, yeah, you know, pierce car tyres. It's not going to flatten a truck tyre straight away. Cost a significant burden on the drivers. Um, Oh yeah, Jar in the world. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, share, subscribe if you like. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye now.